Boston, on the northeastern seaboard of the United States, is one of the country's major centers for technological research. Only Silicon Valley on the west can rival Boston. The Massachusetts Institute for Technology is here, Harvard University. Biogen, Biotech, and uh, many other organizations involved in genetic engineering. The Digital Equipment Corporation, Hewlett Packard, and of course, Polaroid. Well, for some 40 years now, the Polaroid Corporation has been involved and known throughout the world with instant pictures like this. But for the past few years, they've been diversifying. And uh, at the moment, their vision research laboratories are experimenting with a revolutionary new form of digital imaging. The process involves taking an original image or picture, which may be a photograph or something which has been painted, drawn or whatever, putting it up on a TV screen and then beginning to play around with it and modify it. But the key to the system is how it gets to the TV screen in the first place. Well, a regular photograph, like this one or this one here, contains something like 100 million pieces of information about the light, the color, the density and so on of the images that it portrays. Now, it's a well-established technique to uh, pick up the information on a picture like this and uh, with a Viticon tube and portray it on a television screen. But what they can now also do is to pick that information up on something called a drum scanner, which converts it into digital information and then stores it in a large memory bank. Now, a normal television screen can display something like a million pieces of information. This is a high-quality uh, studio monitor that can portray about uh, five million pieces of information, but that's still far short of the uh, 100 million that exist in the main memory. So what the operator does is to work with an image on the screen that is actually an average, if you like, of the more complete information that exists in the main memory. But because it's digital information, she has enormous control over what can be displayed on the screen. So with a few punches of the keyboard, uh, a little cursor appears on the screen, like that. And also you get one degree of enlargement. And then by moving the cursor around, you can find a place that you might want to enlarge. And then just press the buttons here, there's four buttons, and it'll enlarge at one time. Then you can move the cursor around if you like to somewhere else and enlarge it again. It's exactly two times magnification with each jump but the system has the capacity to do that nine times, and that's effectively a magnification of 500, which will in fact fill the screen with a single pixel. And even when it's not as big a magnification as that, you can still do things with it. For instance, if we move the cursor around to pick up a square, the operator can start to manipulate the square by changing it. Let's try changing the color to black, and then if I pull the magnification back again, you can see what a difference that one black square makes. Now what this means is that by manipulating a picture at so basic a level, it can be changed in such a high definition way that it's impossible to tell that those changes have been made artificially. The principles being developed by Polaroid have been incorporated into this equipment produced by the Cytex Corporation and demonstrated here at the Acme Printing Company in Boston. When this photograph was taken originally, the girl's toenails were not painted. The colors were added like this, and they can be changed equally easily. To the lower definition memory, the picture might look like this. But when it's fed into the high definition memory, it comes back like this. But also, when this picture was taken originally, it didn't have the Acme logo on it. It was put on digitally. And it can be removed just as easily. Drops of water can be put in the space left by the erased logo by simply picking up existing drops of water and duplicating them a few centimeters away. The potential for the system goes a lot further than that. Operators say they can take a group photograph, for instance, and rearrange the people's heads on different shoulders in such perfect detail, it would be impossible to tell a change had been made. It makes you wonder. A picture may still be worth a thousand words, but what about that old saying, the camera never lies?